Okay, so in today's lecture, we're going to talk about transistor amplifier stability. So let's say that we have a transistor amplifier that's defined by the dot in the box here, and it's connected to a source that has some uh, fixed resistance R sub S uh, and a load at its output. And we're going to talk about this in terms of what we're going to call W, which is an emittance. So our emittance W can be either a Y or a Z parameter. So we can, in general, say a system is stable if the following conditions are met. The real part of WS uh, with respect to frequency plus WN with respect to frequency is greater than zero. In other words, we have a positive real resistance. And the imaginary part of WS with respect to omega plus WN with respect to omega is equal to zero. Or we can say that the real part of WL with respect to frequency plus W out with respect to frequency is greater than zero. And the imaginary part of WL with respect to frequency plus W out with respect to frequency is equal to zero. Okay, because we have stability criteria that can be enforced from the source or the load, this means that we can enforce stability from either the input or output of our DUT. Now, why is this important? In a transistor amplifier, the input and output can depend on one another. This is especially true at high frequencies where we might have some parasitic gate to drain capacitance, CGD. And this gate to drain capacitance allows a signal maybe to come from the input through this capacitance, see the load, and then reflect off the load. The reflection can come back to the input, and this can keep going on over time. Now, because of this reflection, we can calculate the input emittance and the output emittance. The input emittance is given by our W11 minus W12 times W21 divided by W22 plus WL. So in other words, generally our input emittance should only depend upon the 1, 1 parameter, but because of the interaction due to CGD, it can also depend upon the other parameters in the network. Similarly, we can find a W out. Our W out is equal to W22 minus W12 times W21 divided by W11 plus WS. In general, W12 and W21 cause interactions between the input and output. Now, W21 is a gain parameter that we're going to use in order to exploit the transistor as an amplifier, while W12 is an undesired reverse gain. Now, depending upon the type of amplifier that we're looking at, it can be easier to control the source impedance or the load impedance. So, for instance, for a low noise amplifier, typically the input is connected to the antenna and the output is connected to some fixed impedance on chip, so it might be easier to control the, the, the load impedance. But for a power amplifier, it's often easier to control the input impedance than the output impedance. And the reason is that the output is connected to the antenna. Because the output is connected to the antenna and the antenna impedance varies with the environment, this means that it can be very difficult to fix the output impedance uh, in, uh, into something that might stabilize the amplifier. So right now we're going to devise a minimum stability criteria, and this is called the K factor of the amplifier. The K factor is given by 2 times the real part of W11 times the real part of W22 minus the real part of the product of W12 times W21 that quantity divided by the magnitude of W21 times W12. For a component, if K is greater than 1, the component is stable. And if it's less than 1, it's potentially unstable. Now, to be potentially unstable doesn't inherently mean that the device is unstable. It just means that there might be some impedance that we could present to either the input or the output that could cause the device to lose stability. Now, the above is true for a standalone device, but we can also change this condition with loading. Okay, so what does our component with loading stability criteria look like? We're going to call this k total, and it's going to equal the following. 